adding is joining things and counting them. It's that simple. For example, let's add how many toys we have. One plus one, two. Plus one, three. We have three toys. Easy peasy, huh? As you can see, we use this sign when we are adding. And it's called plus. Let's do another example. If a chicken lays three eggs, another chicken lays five eggs, how many eggs do we have in total? Let's see, three eggs plus five eggs is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight eggs. When we're adding, we only write down the number. We don't say what we're talking about, so it's easier to write. If we add four blue marbles plus two green marbles, we write four plus two. That makes a total of six. So we know we have six marbles. Each one of the quantities that we add are called summers, and a simple addition can have as many summers as we wish. Additions can be written vertically, like this one, or horizontally, like this one. For now, we've seen very simple additions, but it's time to do some that are a little more complicated. To add larger figures, such as 32 plus 56, we place one summit under the other, ones under ones, and tens under tens, like this. Then we add a plus sign. Now we need to add the ones from both summits. Two plus six equals eight. And now let's add the tens. Three plus five equals eight. So the final result is 88. That rhymes with cake. But what happens if the addition has remainders and more than two summers? It's easy peasy. Let's add 15 plus 27 plus four. As we've seen before, we place the summers under each other. Ones under ones and tens after tens. It looks like this. Now we add the ones. Five plus seven equals 12. Plus four equals 16. With the number 16, six represents ones and one represents tens. Because there are no more units to add, we put number six by the result. But number one represents tens, so we can't place it yet because we haven't added tens. So we turn it in a new summit and we take it to the tens column. Now we can add up all tens. One plus one is two, plus two is four. And we put number four in the results, under tens. So the addition's final result is 46. Easy peasy, huh? Now we've learnt to add with remainders. Subtracting is the opposite of adding. It's taking away a smaller amount from a larger amount. For example, if we have six balloons, but two of them burst, we've got one, two, three, and four balloons left. Six minus two equals four. A subtraction is represented by this sign, which is called minus. And each of the figures that form part of the subtraction are called minuend and subtrahend. The minuend is the number that we're going to subtract and the subtrahend is the quantity we're going to take away. For example, if a chicken lays nine eggs, but we use six to make an omelette, 
How many eggs do we have left? How do we do the subtraction? First, we need to place number 9, which is the minuend, the number of eggs that we have at the beginning. Under it, we'll place number 6, which is the subtrahend, the number of eggs that we'll use to make an omelette. After this, we place the minus sign on the left side of the subtrahend and we draw a horizontal line under the subtraction's numbers. Now, we can do the subtraction. If out of 9 eggs, we use 6, we've got 1, 2 and 3 eggs. Now we know how to subtract simple figures, but now we're going to complicate things a little more. To subtract larger figures, for example 56 minus 32, we need to write down the minuend, 56, and under it, the subtrahend, 32. Always placing units under units and tens under tens. After this, we place the minus sign and we're ready to subtract. 56 minus 32 is equal to 6 minus 2 equals 4 and 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. That means that the final result is 24. Easy peasy, huh? Now we're going to complicate things a little more. We're going to subtract with the remainders, but don't worry because it's easy peasy. We're going to subtract 63 minus 45. First, as always, we subtract the units. 3 units minus 5 is... Whoops! It's impossible to subtract 3 minus 5. So, what do we do? Well, it's easy peasy. We transform one of the tens from the minuend into 10 units. And we take them to the units column. Since we had six tens and we've transformed one of them into units, we've got five tens left. We then add these ten units to the three we had in the minuend, meaning that we've got thirteen now. Now we can subtract the units. Thirteen minus five is equal to eight. We have eight units. Now we need to subtract the five tens we had in the minuend and the four tens that we had in the subtrahend. Five minus four is equal to one, meaning that 63 minus 45 is equal to 18. It's easy peasy, don't you think? Now you have to practice lots 